the Nanyang art. Ooh, exciting. So to learn about Nanyang art, we need to first understand that art reflects the values, beliefs, and culture of a society. To understand this, let's look at two examples. Batik art. Batik art reflects the grace and rhythmic nature of the Malayan people who live amidst the decorative flora. Renaissance paintings reflect the birth of human-centeredness of European countries towards the sciences and innovation. So the question is, what kind of art is produced in a new country? A country whose citizens come from various parts of the world who have yet to build a common sense of identity. So this was the concern for Chinese artists who migrated to Malaya due to socio-political changes in China in the 20th century. They were mesmerized by the colorful tropical environment that strongly contrasted with their hometown in China. They felt the need to create new art. The art that they create needs to have a sense of localness something that's different than what they have been creating in China. So these thoughts sparked the birth of Singapore's first art style, the Nanyang style. So here are a few things that I would like you to think about. What is the Nanyang style? What inspired these artists to paint in such a manner for a young Malayan region? And why is this style accepted as one of the most important pioneering art styles in Singapore? To the point where you can find them in the Singapore Dollar Note. style refers to the pioneer Chinese artist style, which were rooted in both Western schools of Paris, post-impressionism, cubism, Fauvism, etc., as well as Chinese painting traditions. Styles and techniques of both were distinctively integrated in depictions of local or Southeast Asian subject matter. Some of these artists are Liu Kang, Chen Wenxi, and George Chen. But why use the word Nanyang? The Nanyang, translated literally as the South Seas, refers to the Southeast Asian region located south of China, where the Chinese traded, so Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Since the 19th century, Chinese immigrants have always been present in Malaya. This includes Singapore and Malaysia. But socio-political changes in China in the 20th century and World War II led to a greater number of Chinese migrants traveling to the South Seas. So these include scholars, philosophers, businessmen, traders, and artists. And this is why you see the word Nanyang in so many places in Singapore. So think Nanyang Primary School, Nanyang Junior College, Nanyang Polytechnic, Nanyang Technological University, Nanyang Girls High School, and of course, the Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts, set up by the very Chinese artists who travel here. It is important to note that these artists are trained in modern art academies in China, where they learn the skills of both Chinese classical calligraphy and ink painting, and Western oil realist techniques, classical perspective, compositional techniques, plain air painting, portraiture, and live drawing. So Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts, or NAFA for short, was modeled after one of these modern art academies in China, which taught both Chinese and Western art styles and this became a major centre for Nanyang art development. So here's the big question. So if the Nanyang artists are trained in both Chinese and Western styles, why do we not see common Chinese or Western subject matter? Why no mountains? Why no biblical stories? Why no Greek mythology? Basically, when you are in a new environment that captivates you, you want to capture them. That's why we take Insta-worthy photos when we find ourselves in a cool new place we take selfies and OTDs. It's the same for these artists who are entering the hot tropical climate of Malaya for the first time. Remember, Chinese and Paris experienced the four seasons with different kinds of fruits, trees and weather. So coming to Malaya was life-changing. They saw tropical fruits and trees, they saw people of different cultures and ethnic garments. So what do you do when you are mesmerized by what you see? You take a photo. Or you paint. The question is, why do we not see this subject matter being painted in an objective manner? These are painted by the Europeans who encountered tropical Singapore for the first time in the 1800s. Why is the Nanyang style not painting in a similar manner? Why is the subject matter treated in such a romantic way? Just take a look, the lady poses lazily, smiling as though she is enjoying the breeze from the sea. The women enjoy themselves as they playfully bathe in the river, but they are placed behind this large banana tree as if the viewer is a voyeur, 
peeping into the lives of these unaware Malayans. Now here's the reason. Malaya has served as a potent signifier for an idyllic way of life in the tropics. To the Chinese, it's, it is seen as a tropical paradise, filled with a passion for tropical beauty. So natives of the rural areas in Southeast Asia were looked upon as exotic beings by the Chinese. Thus, the main characteristics of Nanyang art rests on the ability of these Nanyang artists to transform primitive art to formulate a new artistic language by blending multiple stylistic elements from the East and the West to portray local subject matter via the idyllic and beautiful lens. So what spurred the artist to create a Nanyang style? As we have mentioned earlier, the young artist was spurred on by the search for local colours, a sense of localness that reflects the area that they were in. Four of these artists embarked on a now famous field trip to Bali in 1952 to look for this local colour. So not only did Bali offer them a rich visual source, the Balinese experience also revealed the ritualistic, experiential and decorative nature of Southeast Asian art. The trip resulted in inspiring a distinctive Nanyang flavour and an ethnic charm, working against the background of Singapore, a meeting point between the cultures of the East and the West. Secondly, Nanyang artists were influenced by the common sentiment of the communities in Malaya. There is a strong desire to search for a national identity that emerged as part of Singapore's and Malaysia's move towards independence in the 1950s. As Malaya is a multicultural society, most of whom are immigrants from various countries, there was a need to search for a new national identity in order to unify the society from these different backgrounds. These aspirations are made accessible visually in the Nanyang art, thus making them palatable for the people. Who would not celebrate pretty paintings of their home country, yet painted in trending styles of the West, yet familiar styles of the East, to reflect the balance of modernity and tradition that the young country values as she moves towards a brighter future. So easily, the Nanyang style becomes an important Singaporean art style that should be treasured as it reflects the hopes and dreams, the values, and the culture of our pioneers who took bold steps to create the Singapore that we live in today.